So that's the most common thing you'd expect from an Oracle, which is like, tell us the price of a particular currency. And then amongst those, we have two specific types. So we have uh, uh, prices that we're getting from uh, polling and, and getting averages, uh, determining averages from centralized exchanges like Kraken. And then we have Cardano native tokens, which um, we run our own full Cardano nodes and create a one large liquidity pool, uh, determine the average price of a, of a Cardano native token block by block. So there's 21 of those live right now. So ADUSD, for example, is a good example of ones that we're getting from a centralized exchange, getting it from Kraken and Coinbase and so forth. Um, and then, you know, um, uh, MinSwap or, or IUSD or WMT, these are all examples then of Cardano native tokens. These are tokens that have been minted using Cardano native minting technology and are exchanged on Cardano decentralized exchanges. Uh, we've got uh, five uh, collector nodes sitting uh, geographically dispersed in Toronto, Sydney, London, Frankfurt, Singapore, and Bangalore. Um, each one is running its own full node, so they're not going to a API. That's so they all have the same shared uh, source of truth. They all have their own full node. They all have their own full copy of the Cardano blockchain. And each one, every block is doing a calculation, looking at all the smart contracts for each of the those dexes that I listed, and then using that to create an average uh, price per token for that block. What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to DAP Central, your own for everything blockchain and crypto. I'm your host, Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're diving into OrcFacts. We'll be joined by Peter Van Garderen, the founder of this Oracle protocol, which has officially gone live on the Cardano main net. Without any further ado, let's welcome up our guest, Peter. Welcome up. How are you? Hey, doing fantastic. Thank you, Farid. I always enjoy having you on here. Congrats on the mainnet launch. We're going to be diving into that and everything else that OrcFax has been up to over the course of the last couple of months. Now, you've been here before. I think you already know exactly how this goes, but maybe we sort of kick off with an icebreaker, highlighting a little bit about you, um, what you've contributed to OrcFax. And for anybody who maybe hasn't heard of OrcFax, what are you guys building on Cardano? Uh, cool. Well, thanks. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I've been involved in the Cardano building in the Cardano space for a little over two years now. I got uh, I got hooked and brought in through the Project Catalyst mechanism. Um, I was uh, interested in Cardano uh, in the technology, in the culture, uh, in the decentralized governance already as as much as two years ago, um, and was working another full time job and then proposed a couple of projects to Project Catalyst. One of which was Orcfax. It got uh, funded for some early seed R and D. And then I was hooked. And the reason was that uh, I am a digital archivist. I've been working uh, in that space for 20 plus years. I have a graduate degree in archival science. And so I've developed some free open source software platforms for that industry uh, that allows uh, memory institutions to preserve and provide access to authentic uh, information and records. And the archival profession um, spends a lot of time thinking about how we, uh, what we can do and how we can improve our methodologies and practices to prove that the records that we're keeping in storage are preserved authentic. And so um, I took quite a bit of interest then in all the discussions going around this problem, around the, the blockchain technology when it first emerged. Um, I was interested in Bitcoin first and foremost as a libertarian play, as an alternative to centralized finance and uh, money printing and so forth. And then very quickly became interested in the underlying technology and its claims for the ability to uh, authenticate uh, records and information. So um, I began studying it. I became interested in things like the Oracle problem, which uh, fundamentally is how do we take information from the outside world and present it and publish it in such a way onto a blockchain so that blockchain smart contracts can trust it and use that information in their, in their smart contracts and their actions that they want to take. Um, it sounds simple, but it's actually a fundamentally critical problem. Uh, and yeah, thank you. Here's the great summary then of how we're tackling the Oracle problem. So, and it, it, just to clarify one more time that the blockchains themselves are uh, a breakthrough technology. They give us distributed uh, trust. Um, they uh, allow us to say, I can see what you are seeing at the same time without having to trust a third party telling us that's the case. That sounds simple again as well, but that's, a, that's an incredible breakthrough. But blockchains themselves have a very limited amount of transaction space. We can't stuff them full of PDFs and MP3s and other kinds of content information. So they rely um, on um, hashes to external documents or, and on external information coming from outside of the blockchain to carry out their transactions. This is a huge vulnerability for any blockchain. Um, I don't think it's been given enough attention to the Cardano space and uh, I want Cardano to succeed. And that's why myself as an archivist decided to tackle the Oracle problem as an archivist would. 
And so what we're doing here then is saying, what we're doing is in the course of collecting outside real world information, we are documenting and leaving an audit trail behind, which is one of the key methodologies we have in archival science and using good prescriptive metadata to describe what we've collected. Um, and then we give you the full audit log package of how we gathered the data that uh, is, is interesting to a blockchain smart contract on Cardano, um, how we calculated the values, and then we archive those in a package and make them accessible, linkable from the transaction that was published on chain as an Oracle publication. Now that approach is, is how an archivist would approach the Oracle problem. Most Oracles, um, you subscribe to their, to their feed and you get a magic number that appears on chain without any further contact. So now we're back to like, Hey, trust me, bro. I'm a, I'm, a, you know, I'm a trustworthy, um, I'm a trustworthy institution, a trustworthy uh, project, a trustworthy platform. So the data that I magically produce on chain, you should be trusting it. And as an archivist, that's simply not good enough. What we want is proof. We want to be able to trust, but verify. And so this, this basic concept of, of, of creating these uh, very open standard based um, audit log packages for the Oracle data that we're publishing on chain is one of the key differentiators from OrgFax. And as you know, that's really my, my, you know, the, the Peter, the, the Peter flavored input into developing an Oracle. Um, then there's lots of other parts of this Oracle that are standard to other Oracle platforms uh, that we see in other L1s. Um, but um, until Charlie Three came along and started publishing data to Cardano, um, there was no there was no legitimate mainnet uh, Oracle product on Cardano, which is a huge huge blind spot in my opinion for a a a, uh, a chain that's going for L1 dominance wants uh, <clears throat> wants to be taken seriously as an L1 main player. And so obviously it's best it's also good to have competition. So we're very happy now that we can also introduce ourselves as a second uh, legitimate mainnet. Oracle products on the Cardano platform. And that's what we've done this week. That's a wonderful segue into the breaking news here. OrcFax protocol version one now live on the Cardano mainnet. Again, first off, congrats to you and the entire team for getting this far. Um, you guys have been working extremely hard during the bear market, and I think it's now about to pay off. Um, for anybody who just maybe doesn't understand or isn't aware you know, of what this means for you guys, can you break down where this falls in the grand scheme of things and exactly what's available now that the Oracle is now live on the main net? And then I want to dive into some of the feeds and options that are available. Super, yeah. Um... Well, it was a long and winding journey. Um, building on Cardano is not uh, as straightforward as we would have liked, I think. And I'm I'm not going to start griping about that. It's been it's been a long uh, discussion about that in the Cardano developer community over the past year. Um, you know, after uh, the several hard forks, um, there, there's still there's still some struggles for builders to build uh, to agree agreed upon tool sets, uh, conventions. Um, just tooling in general, like uh, to make it easier to to publish and to data on on chain, do do other transactions on chain. So we had we had the same hurdles that uh, most other uh, build, uh, projects building Cardano had, which was simply to overcome the technical barriers and to um, uh, you know do a better job as a community to collaborate as developers to to share knowledge and share tooling. Um, we think that we're I. I personally believe and my team believe that we're, we're finally over that hump, that we're finally seeing some maturity now in the space. Um, certainly ourselves have benefited strongly from Aiken um, and have really gone uh, an Aiken flavor based approach to our development. Um, and I think that was one of the major breakthroughs. Um, we we tried um, in, in the pure R&D sense of the word, we, we had a protocol ready to go. We worked with some external contractors um, that helped us design a protocol for doing Oracle publication. Um, and then when push came to shove and we went to implement the, the protocol, we ran into a number of technical difficulties. So we essentially, um, halfway through this past year, we, we started, all, not from scratch, but we started the on-chain on publication component, um, brand, a brand new design. Um, so that obviously created some delays for us as well. Um, and again, I think it parallels the story like of many other builders in the space um, where we've had these trials and tribulations. Fortunately, we've had the fortitude um to to push and power through because we believe in the mission uh, i really believe strongly in what i said earlier there that we we need um, strong viable unique powerful comprehensive oracle solutions on the cardano's uh, chain so that we can make the cardano ecosystem a, a trustworthy um reliable uh, long-term uh, dependable uh, blockchain infrastructure that the world desperately needs so the, the the original arguments for why we need blockchain and distributed trust technology hasn't gone away since it was first, you know, talked about ten years ago, and all the all the hype and has come and gone since then. Uh, fundamentally, we still need this as basic public infrastructure, in my opinion. So we're excited to provide it. 
Uh, and that was part of the reason we kept our head down. It was, it was more than just uh, another development project. This really was about building infrastructure that we think is going to make a key difference in the world. So for anybody who wants to actually check this out, it's available at explore.orgfax.io. I've now got it up here on screen. Peter, if you could, you know, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what some of these network summaries are and exactly what types of feeds are available. Yeah, super. So um, there's essentially two types of feeds available right now. Um, we have current exchange rates. So that's the most common thing you would expect from an Oracle, which is like, tell us the price of a particular currency. And then amongst those, we have two specific types. So we have uh, uh, prices that we're getting from uh, polling and, and getting averages, uh, determining averages from centralized exchanges like Kraken. And then we have Cardano native tokens, which um, we run our own full Cardano nodes and create a one large liquidity pool uh, determine the average price of a, of a Cardano native token block by block. So there's 21 of those live right now. So ADUSD, for example, is a good example of ones that we're getting from a centralized exchange, getting it from Kraken and Coinbase and so forth. Um, and then, you know, um, uh, MinSwap or, or IUSD or WMT, these are all examples then of Cardano native tokens. These are tokens that have been minted using Cardano native minting technology and are exchanged on Cardano decentralized exchanges, such as MinSwap, Sunday Swap. Um, Spectrum um, wing riders, and those are the um, those are the liquidity pools for those particular uh, decentralized exchanges. Is what we're looking at every block. So we have um, uh, we've got uh, five uh, collector nodes sitting uh, geographically dispersed in Toronto, Sydney, London, Frankfurt, Singapore, and Bangalore. Um, each one is running its own full node, so they're not going to a API. That's so they all have the same shared uh, source of truth. They all have their own full node. They all have their own full copy of the Cardano blockchain. And each one, every block is doing a calculation, looking at all the smart contracts for each of the those DEXs that I listed, and then using that to create an average uh, price per token for that block. So we believe we have the most trustworthy, robust, um, dependable, comprehensive, timely price data, native price data information for Cardano native tokens. Um, and of course, if you uh, if you go back to the um, if you go back to Explorer, that you can uh, follow through with what I mentioned earlier is that you don't have to take our word for it. Um, all of this data is if you click on one of those uh, one of those prices, um, you'll be taken to the, the full card. So you get the historical data. If you scroll down a little bit further, <clears throat> there's um, the full archival package uh, available for each of the um, fact statements is available here. If you scroll down a little bit further. You, um, you see here in the Archive Explorer. So what you're looking at here is bag info text is a standard from the Library of Congress. It's, it's well accepted in the digital archiving world. It's a way to package information, make it accessible and usable for long-term access. So this is meant to be archived and stored permanently forever um, in a format that has um, standards compliant metadata descriptions. If you click on that data, that little data box on the left, uh, on the, in the left window, no, that one, yeah, that, exactly. Double click on that, it'll open up the package. And so you'll see there, for example, that um, where we derive the data from each of the individual um, DEX uh, pools for that particular block. And so all of that data is, is there in, in full human and machine readable format. So and this is just one of now um, hundreds of fact statements that we're producing every day that are going on chain on Cardano and these associated um, uh, archival audit log packages are going on permanent storage on the Arweave decentralized storage network using uh, the archive, an archival bond technique to link hashes so that you can prove that they both existed at the same time. So this is giving us, you know, um, and again, you might say, Peter, well, this is that's kind of overkill for just giving me the price of of uh, mint of the mint token right now. Um, but I think what really is going to matter when push comes to shove, when there is a controversial moment, when there is something happening where we, something we may not trust the network, we may not trust the prices that are coming back. It is at that time we need this kind of archival information so we can backtrack and see what happened, compare and contrast uh, a few blocks before, a few blocks afterwards. So you can see how powerful and important this information is going to be to, to prevent fraud, to prevent fraudulent transactions to even, in my opinion, discourage um, you know, that kind of activity on our network. It's all part of hardening our network, hardening the reputation we have as a, as a blockchain that stands for truth. And so I think this kind of approach, this kind of archive-based approach to oracles is really important to, to presenting that. I think this also sets the precedence or the standard, right, for expectations for what the community should demand moving forward for Oracle solutions, where it's like, hey, if you guys have been able to build something as robust and as redundant as this, 
I feel like we shouldn't expect anything less from anybody else in the future, given the fact that we're improving tooling, improving development solutions, et cetera, right? So um, first and foremost, again, congrats to you guys. This is extremely thorough. Again, I'll leave the link to it down below for anybody who has any questions or maybe just wants to check it out on their own. Uh, but what I love about it is what you just mentioned at the very end, like not only are you guys taking the time to aggregate from multiple sources and bring it on chain, but once it's on chain, you guys are backing it up with our weave and different uh, platforms where people could then come back in the future and actually double check, right? Just to make sure that um, things were put on chain correctly the first time and that obviously that things were maintained properly. Now let's talk a little bit about pricing and how you guys are able to make a living through this as well. So Peter, do you mind breaking down for anybody that maybe wants to integrate these feeds? How can they do that? And then what types of options are available when it comes to the frequency or the heartbeats for these different feeds? Yeah, so the, the feeds that you're seeing right now, we've divided, we're calling them showcase feeds in the sense that we want to show the community what's possible for your token of interest. So we've you know, made a selection of some of the top uh, tokens of interest on the Cardano native, uh, in the Cardano native space. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of subsidized feeds like A to USD that we believe are strong, that are important enough that we as a project want to support. But by by showcase, we mean like, hey, we're we're paying for the data, for the data collection, packaging, and publishing right now. But um, if you'd like to keep this feed up and running, and if you'd like to use it in your for your particular project, um, come talk to us about how um, the the payment for heartbeat feeds works. So we essentially have two approaches. I think this is pretty standard across the Oracle world. Is that you can either do uh, a, a, a pull based request or a push or, or use our push based request. And so we use the language um, heartbeat for the push, saying like so every hour we have a heartbeat and so that's what these subsidized feeds are doing right now um, and so we're doing the, the collection calculation and publishing them on chain um, and um, for we have a we have a formula for um, um, batching together um, different fees that have a regular heartbeat because as you can imagine we can uh, have significant price cost reductions if we know that several feeds are going to be published at once we have uh, a mechanism to uh, to allow projects that have that have the need for a heartbeat feed for whatever product they may need it for um, to then um, approach um, uh, our the the Orcfax payment mechanism so that um, you can um, either together or with another group uh, subsidize the payment of a feed to make sure it stays running. And then we're currently working on a API based on demand, um, a poll based feature set where you essentially uh, projects will have the ability to pull um, what the prices that are being collected by our network are at any given time. And then if you're interested in that price, you make the request to get that data published on chain. So the, the key thing to remember here is again, is that what our, what our product is, isn't the, isn't the information, it isn't the price, it's us validating that this price was true at a certain point in time. That's the value that an Oracle gives. Because anybody can go read the CoinGecko API and says, oh, I know the price of AWSD right now, I'll put it on chain. Um, but what you're not getting is saying, here's a network that's gone through all these steps that you can trust, that we've done, uh, we've done all these, this, this diligent process to ensure that the data was collected in a certain way, it was averaged, uh, the, the calculations were, were done a certain way. And we can prove that, that these various servers around the world saw this information at the same time, they were getting this response from the API, or they were reading this data on the blockchain, and all of these servers have come together and agreed that that's what they saw, and this is what was put on chain. So you can that's a much higher, more trustworthy, valuable um, than than picking off data from some an API somewhere. But the 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 difference obviously is um, is also making the users of Cardano DApps understand that that's important. I think up until now, um, so the, so the market for Orcfax data prices will be driven by the stakeholders of Cardano platform products. To say that, hey, is is this is this is this uh, is this yield farming pro pro project that I'm using? Is this is this product DeFi product X? This loan product? This other thing? Um, are these where's the where is the data coming from? Like, how can I trust when an, an, an action is executed using my money that the information you say happened, this thing that happened? How can I trust it really happened? Show me show me the books. Like, show me the records. Where's this? Where's the org facts record for this? And so what we need to now do as, as, a, as an Oracle project is, is raise awareness within the community to say this is important. Like, and it's not just important for us as an Oracle because we want to succeed. It's important for Cardano as an ecosystem to build trust in the way that we do DeFi. Um, and we haven't even talked about beyond DeFi yet, but obviously you can imagine how um, very cool and interesting um, storing full records of data that was collected and analyzed on chain is going to be once we go beyond price data, beyond more interesting things. Um, like we talked, we, you know, supply chain verification, 
but we can go all the way up to um, political discourse as an example of where we'd like to go eventually. And which is why I've built this platform like I have as an archivist, because I believe we can start building a historical truth machine. And so the very first step is to build a market for those for those um, truth records. Um, and that comes from encouraging Cardano DeFi stakeholders to um, ask their ask the platforms that they're that they're using um, how, they're, how, they're, how they're getting their outside data and how they can trust it. Yeah, I think right now with the presidential elections in the US, this would be an opportune time uh, to maybe sort of tap in in that niche and provide a potential use case, right? To let people know this is how we can actually use blockchain and this is how important oracles are to um, fact checking, right? For lack of better terms, exactly. um, real time decisions. So Peter, I appreciate that bit there. Um, one thing I'd maybe love for you to dive into is where you guys currently stand on the roadmap. And you guys are currently, I believe, working with um, validators from the community on your ITN, and you guys are operating a federated network right now. But could you break down you know, the process from the federated network to a fully decentralized network? Yeah, cool. So that's, I mean, that's essentially it. We want to transition transition from a federated network where Oracle, the Oracle Orgfax, the project is responsible for running the valid the uh, collector nodes and the validator node, and switching it to a fully decentralized uh, network. Um, so that really, you know, getting to mainnet and 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 showing how and figuring out how we are publishing and packaging our data on chain into um, into transactions that integrators can read and use was really the, the first major milestone. And now that we've achieved that, we're uh, refocusing our attention to work with the people that are standing by to be OrcFax validators to run our incentivized testnet. Uh, we have a um, project Catalyst Fund 12 project to uh, do the, the, the research, uh, the, the actual uh, studying the various options that are available to us for consensus logic, um, ideally native to um, the Cardano ecosystem. So Mithril is something we're looking closely at. Um, and so that, uh, combined then with the, the validator uh, IT and rollout is what's going to be happening over the next couple of months. And so figuring out um, the go-to architecture and uh, the consensus logic for the uh, decentralized validator network, and then progressively um, in increasing the uh, functionality of the collector nodes of the people participating in the validator network. So step one is that the validators will fire up um, all over 100 validators, um, will fire up their, their validator nodes and begin collecting on behalf of the OrgFax network and sending that information to the validator. So that's the very first major milestone in, in the incentivized testnet. It's incentivized in the sense that you participate, um, you, get, you get rewarded in actual real world fact um, to participate and help us test drive uh, the technology. And so the, uh, as you can tell by the roadmap there, the big step obviously will be is to switch over full uh, functionality of the network from uh, all of the collector nodes and validator nodes and publication nodes being run by one of the 100 um, validator nodes uh, in the network. And at that point, um, it will be uh, the way that the, um, the the data will be published will be based on a random consensus logic capability so that every round of publication, one of the validator nodes will be, will be selected after the, the data collection and validation has been done to publish on chain on behalf of the network. Um, and then the final piece of that is to fully decentralize governance as well. So we anticipate having uh, switching to a foundation-based governance, fully stake-based um, governance decisions. And we're following closely uh, in the footsteps there and, and taking uh, notes from the process that's happening in the Cardano community at large. And I think that really um, paves, this, paves the way for us as well as a, as a project within the community. It gives us tooling um, expectations and, and some, um, some a template essentially to follow as well. Um, but yeah, we've been really, as you can imagine, head down on um, getting to the, this publication, the V1 mainnet launch publication, and, and, um, and now figuring, figuring out and working with our community, which of the protocols works best for us, um, given our types of data, our types of uh, data publication needs, and uh, how we're going to uh, translate that into actual uh, a fully decentralized validator network over the next, uh, and we're, yeah, we're excited to do that work starting that work over the, over the coming months. Yeah, I'm excited to keep up with it. And for the viewers, if you guys want to find out more about everything that he's just mentioned here, they do have an official docs page. I'll leave the link to that down below where it breaks down their roadmap, their um, pathway to decentralization, the auditability, publication models, their vision, et cetera. Now, one thing that we haven't discussed, Peter, is security. Um, do you mind breaking down? Does OrgFax need smart contracts? If so, are they being audited? And if they are being audited, can you let us know who by? Yeah, we uh, we're very happy to let you know that TX Pipe is is doing our on chain um, audit. Um, so so all the data, OrcFax doesn't use a smart contract, but OrcFax um, gets triggered. Is like again I mentioned earlier by a pull or push based mechanism 
to provide signed data, data that has a, a token attached to it that can be proven to be minted by uh, the ArcFax constitution. Um, and so uh, that whole process and how that data is wrapped and how that data is linked back out um, is being looked at and audited right now. We have uh, had several integrators let us know that that's, that's a must have um, for, for integration of, of the ORCFAX feed. So we're very close to, th uh, we started that process and we think, uh, we hope optimistically that it's uh, just uh, not, not too much longer a, a matter of weeks, um, if, if so, uh, if that. Um, and then separately from that, we're also in the process of, that's the most important part, having the on-chain um, uh, datum uh, publication process audited. And then we're also getting a, a full audit done of the off-chain architecture. So all the data that's uh, currently being used in this federated network, um, we've got we've done a lot of security hardening work around that over the last two months. And so now we're getting um, that uh, that architecture audited as well, um, inc including the Explorer and the off-chain audit log packages, um, so that there's also can be full trust in this in this federated stage of the network um, that uh, the mechanisms that we put in place uh, are trustworthy, um, are auditable, are verifiable. Um, so yeah, on-chain audit, then an off-chain audit, and hopefully that will help to increase the the confidence in our in our solution. Nice. Now, one thing that I feel like we haven't touched on, which I think is extremely important, is the actual fact token. So again, right now you guys are operating on a federated network. As you guys go fully decentralized, can you highlight how the fact token actually plays a part in this and how that incentivizes good behavior? Yeah, well, we have we took a very serious stand with um, uh, our tokenomics and we um, reserved 50% of our entitled fixed token supply for validator reward uh, rewards. Um, that's a sign um, of intention that we understand that um, the, the the viability and the success of this network is going to be based on having validators step up and provide their computing resources and provide their independent consensus um, algorithms. And um, and so um, as we switched, first of all, to the ITN, the uh, a certain very small percentage of the validator rewards there um, will be used to pay the, the ITN validators. And then as we switch to fully decentralized, that pool right there is represents uh, a subsidy. So the way we've designed it is allow for a five, six year curve so that up at the very beginning of the network launch, if you are a validator, you will be receiving a high portion, um, more so than market value worth to participate in the network simply because we want you there and we need you there. So um, there's going to be a high portion of this uh, particular allocation for the first year or two uh, for the initial OG validators. Um, and then uh, we expect to see uh, remuneration from integrators and feed users um, starting to subsidize the actual cost um, over that period of the first, uh, first second, third year. Um, and so we anticipate that by year five or six, the entire network uh, it should be self-sustaining based on uh, fees that are gathered. But if you are a validator, um, there is that entire, there's that very large um, allocation of rewards has been put aside to reward you for your participation um, during the, uh, the initial phases of the network, of the full, the fully decentralized network. Thank you. And again, all of this is documented in the official docs page. Um, I really love this particular uh, diagram here, breaking down sort of the flow of the fact token, what parties are involved and how this again benefits, not just the validators, right? But me as an ADA holder using Cardano, I can actually trust that the information, not just price data, right? And that's actually going to be a segue to my next portion, that that's all verifiable, that that's all accurate. And so, Peter, as we get ready to wind things down here, um, you mentioned and alluded to this a little bit earlier, you know, price feeds are great. I think they're a, a great sort of first stepping stone. But what comes next and sort of, you know, what's the vision now that like the biggest hurdle for OrcFax is out the way with the official mainnet launch? Um, yeah, well, I've got all these big ideas. Like, you know, I'm like, hi, I'm an archivist. I want to make an Oracle and Cardano. Look at all the cool things we can do. And here, let's build the future. And here we are. Um, and I still have to be, you know, I've been humbled a bit this past year and a half by the, the actual development grind and building and getting a, a product built and sticking, um, sticking to the plan and like, and making sure we prioritize what comes first. So price data, first and foremost, is the most important thing as the biggest demand. And then I think we're starting to, so the second phase is going to be kind of spin-offs of that kind of thing. So we're already talking very seriously to a project about another project you're interested in, in, in estimated moving averages. So um this is common in other in other oracle platforms where uh, you've got products that, that, that are, are sensitive to high volatility and don't want to react to high volatility events 
So they benefit more from having um, a, 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 an actual uh, averaged out uh, price over time. And so that's called an EMA. So that's that's the type of product that I think we, uh, we're we going to want to see. Um, the, the, the interesting thing about doing anything on Cardano is that um, we can point to other ecosystems and going, oh, their oracles do this, their oracles do that. And then we go, fine, let's do it on ours. And then it's, well, e e -E so like changes to everything. Like it really changes the mindset of in, and how you think about business model, for example, how you can charge. Um, um, and also like how you, ma again, make things trustworthy and transparent, how you can uh, chain things. So um, uh, it, it makes it interesting. Like if, if it does feel like we're doing very innovative work. So, so that's an example of a DeFi kind of uh, version two thing after basic price data. The other thing we're seeing is, is projects wanting to have us publish their particular data on chain for them. And so they recognize that having um, the stamp of approval saying like, this has been certified by OrgFax uh, as an Oracle and putting that on chain rather than putting their own, whatever their product happens to be on chain themselves or simply having an API. Um, we're starting to see projects that I guess either through their own founders or their, their community are sensitive and, and understanding of this idea that there needs to be a uh, an independent kind of trust layer for for getting data on chain. You can't just magically have data appear from one place to the next. And so I think and and so for us, it's a matter of then talking to those projects and figuring out how we as OrgFax can do our job as Oracle providers to say we've we've checked this data the best we can. This is the ways we checked it, and here's the archival package for this type of data, and this is what you're looking at. So I think we can we expect and hope to have a what, at least one or two of those types of uh, feeds coming out in the next month or so as well, or at least uh, announcements of them. Um, and then I think um, I, I think from a business perspective, um, and certainly for something like if we were to. Um, want to look for outside investment in something like the Oracle platform, which I'm not saying we are, but if we were, things certainly like supply chain verification is a really big, um, re really, there's a lot of interest in that right now. Um, previously, I would have said things like uh, carbon credits monitoring. So like, you know, are these trees really growing? How much uh, was, was the soil condition any better or worse last month than it was? So like taking IoT data and, and validating that. Um, I thought was going to be the next big play, but I think even more so. Um, I mean, certainly, we're seeing it already with ZenGate, for example. They've done a really, uh, they've got a really interesting product. I, I would see, uh, I think, for the Oracle world, like us, for for the kind of platform we have, I think that would be more of a direction we move in, as um, you know, the most immediate next step. Um, but then, um, as an as an as an archivist and as somebody who believes in decentralization, as a decentralizationist and the power we have with technology to make the world better. Um, I, I would very much like to see at very least us do some R&D projects that uh, tackle some of these, these more tougher subjects, like, for example, political speeches and so forth. Um, did this did person A really say uh, that this thing or that thing? Or were they really here? Were they really there? Um, it, I think it's going to be critical in the world of deep fakes and misinformation that we have uh, a platform that can, that can provide those solutions. And I think um, building it on the most trustworthy, robust, uh, decentralized distributed trust that uh, network we have out there, Cardano, is is the right place to do it. And that's why I'm here. There's so much to break down. I feel like I've got to get you back on for uh, an additional follow-up interview. Um, but you mentioned the carbon credits, the supply chain manufacturing, AI, deepfakes, and politics. I mean, I feel like those are tangible use cases that anybody across the board can understand. You know, again, I'm not knocking what you guys have achieved so far with the prices, um, but I feel like those other use cases have so much more relatability. You know, whether you, you like it or not, everybody understands AI. They understand the problem with deep fakes. They understand politics. They understand what you mentioned about renewable energy and the carbon credits and making sure that those things are all done properly. And that's what I'm personally super excited about. Um, you also mentioned, though, you know, some of the differences between EUTXO and then you also talked about the EVM or the account-based model, which I think will sort of segue me into my very last and final question here before we dive into closing thoughts from you. Um, there's been a lot of chatter about projects going multi-chain, Cardano being integrated into more and more platforms, right, to sort of um, break out of the island. Have you thought about taking OrcFax multi-chain or into other ecosystems, especially as you guys are now finding your footing here within Cardano? Um, the thoughts cross my mind, but to be honest with you, there's, um, we're just not at that stage and I don't expect us to be for any time soon. 
making a reliable, trustworthy Oracle on Cardano is a big enough problem in and of itself. And there is a big enough market here, in my opinion, to support that. And so, um, I so I would say the answer is no, um, and I I believe strongly in Cardano EU Tixo technology, and I want it to be sustainable, and I want it to be, um, you know, a going concern um, in a in a year or two or three as as other L ones start to fall by the wayside. It's only inevitable. Um, I've you know I've I've come to Cardano for a reason, and uh, I believe in so many of its of its fundamental uh, technological decisions. Um, that I believe it's the right choice for 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 this you know what, what do we want to call it third generation L1 like smart contract capable um, technology that's got in my opinion has taken the best of all all worlds and so yeah I mean and I'd be the first one to put my hand up saying it hasn't been easy to develop on it but uh, I still believe in the vision I still be there's a reason to be here and um, I I want Orcfax to be a a trustworthy um, piece of infrastructure on that uh, like a piece of tooling a piece of a layer in that in that um, blockchain solution um, that that our community and the world can rely upon. So there's 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 more than enough to do here um, and and solve and and improve upon um, for quite some time. So and as as somebody who's like you know always been involved in the R and D end of of the software development. Um, I'm quite excited about it. I'm quite excited about the opportunities. Um, I see them as opportunities where there's problems. Um, we tend to tackle them as like, how do we fix it? Like, and how, you know, we still have, you know, we still have yet to have like a, a, a moment where um, we've, we, we stopped and said, this is, this is it, this is wrong. This blockchain is the wrong, EATXO is the wrong way to go. Um, this has all been a big mistake. Let's, let's pack up and go. Um, I, I don't believe that at all. Um, and I believe this community is resilient. We're resilient and I believe in good engineering. Um, and I can't wait to keep contributing to that stack. I am personally a firm believer in the saying that great things take time. Um, and something like OrgFax, I believe has the opportunity to be great and yeah, it's not going to be built overnight. Right. So, um, again, kudos to you, the entire team for sticking this out, um, for getting to the point that you guys have, and then for beginning to now think about what is that next big step or what is that next big milestone that we can look forward to as a team. And so with that said, Peter, um, we've been going here for about 40 minutes. And again, I want to, um, let you know how much I appreciate your time. I know you've been working diligently around the clock to make this happen. And I'm sure that you're in need of some rest. So I'm not going to um, stop you from getting some of that hopefully today. But I do want to give you an opportunity to just let the viewers know how can they get in contact or join the OrcFax community? And then do you have any closing thoughts, right? Or maybe any um, closing key takeaways that you want to share here with the community? Um, cool. Yeah. Well, we we're we're most active on on X, uh, formerly Twitter, and Discord. So if you give us a follow and retweet us up at X, that would be really much appreciated to help build our the reach of our network and our audience. Um, and if you want to um, get into more detail and talk and specifically about some of the solutions and some of the technology that we're building, Discord is really active, and and uh, we have a team member respond um, <clears throat> pretty quickly within there and 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 redirect questions as needed. Um, so we, yeah, we really benefit a lot from having this active uh, community. So that helps us guide our own um, R and D roadmap as well, and earn some of our own prioritization. Um, and yeah, we've, you know, it, it tends to be um, a, an engaged audience that is interested in the types of ideas I was talking to you about today. Um, I think it scratches uh, an itch for a lot of people that um, maybe you know we were feeling like, like you said, with, with the larger, bigger picture of what an oracle can do. And why oracles are important. Um, I think it's the, the kind of audience we're attracting is it really speaks to that. So if this kind of a project and this kind of R and D uh, speaks to you as well, then please uh, hop into Discord. Um, you know, get involved and um, and perhaps think about becoming uh, participating in the ITN is is the most the most the deepest the deepest you can jump in there um, is to pick up a validator license and start working with us on helping develop that fully decentralized network. What you guys are building is definitely speaking to me. Um, I'm going to be doing a deep dive into OrgFax, which you guys have uh, provided in the Explore, right? So um, that will do it here for today's video. Again, Peter Van Garder, the founder of OrgFax, bringing decentralized Oracle feeds for Cardano um, applications, right? So um, again, I'll leave the links to this down below. If you guys want to check out their Explore, links to that will be down there as well. If you're a project or you're a builder, you know, take a, take a look, um, do some comparisons and give them a shot you know i'm a firm believer in the in the saying that competition brings out the best in everybody 
right? And as you rightfully mentioned earlier, there's a lot of market share here in Cardano. And I think you guys are well positioned to make a huge impact here in the ecosystem. So Peter, I look forward to hopefully catching up with you again in Dubai for the Cardano Summit. I know you taught an amazing masterclass breaking down oracles. And again, looking forward to uh, getting to hang out, catch up and maybe not do too much talking about crypto, maybe just catching up more generally this time. So that said, um, for the viewers, if you guys have found any portion of today's interview here with Peter Van Garderen to be helpful, if you learn anything, make sure to smash that thumbs up. It's one of the best ways to support me as a content creator. And it's also one of the easiest ways to get this content outside to people that may not know what's going on here in Cardano. Second, if you do appreciate content just like this, consider subscribing to the channel for more of it. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me or Peter as it pertains to their ITN, the FAC token, their mainnet launch, um, then just make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down there and I'll be monitoring those and passing those along. That said, and as always, we'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everybody.